Nothing sucks more than losing money. Money that could have been in your pocket. And investing can lose you a whole lot of money if you're not staying up to date and making well-informed decisions. It can be overwhelming keeping up, but as long as you stick to some fundamentals, you'll be just fine. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through part two of our investing do's and don'ts to help you navigate the world of investing and avoid common pitfalls in 2023 that can cost you money. I'll be doing this by taking you through the do's and don'ts of five more asset classes. So whether you're a seasoned investor or just getting started, this video is for you. Smash those like and subscribe buttons and let's get right into it. A year ago, crypto was loved by all, but now it seems like most people have soured on it because they lost money. But let's take a closer look. Crypto had a big boom, then a bust, and then another boom. But now that's winding down and we're seeing a big decline. The problem with crypto right now is that investing in it is like playing a game of pure chance. You're betting that someone in the future will be willing to pay more for it, but that's just gambling. And if you're playing with the wrong people, you could end up losing big. Some people say crypto will change the world, but who really knows where it's headed? Some people may choose to keep investing, but the biggest risk I see with crypto is that the technology behind it, blockchain, will become frictionless and available to everyone. That's why the crypto environment can feel sketchy and uncertain. And if people keep selling in disappointment, the value will keep going down. Why buy into something that's under so much pressure? The long-term trend isn't looking good unless crypto can gain real traction and usage. Right now, that doesn't seem to be happening. So for now, crypto is a don't in my eyes. When it comes to alternatives, Goldman defines it as private equity, private credit, real estate, infrastructure, sustainability, and liquid alternatives. All of these have had a boom just like real estate, but with a lag. If you're not an expert like Horowitz, Anderson, or Sequoia, then you might not know that the golden age has passed. So when it comes to alternatives, I would be super careful. Just like with YouTube, booms in watches, cars, art, and other things can happen quickly, but can also end just as fast. So for this, it's a do if you know what you're doing and a don't if you're not well informed. Okay, let's talk about bonds for a minute. They are pretty much a terrible investment right now. If we look at the returns, they're expected to be zero over the next seven years. International bonds might be a little better, but you're still taking on currency and emerging market risks. US inflation-linked bonds can protect you from inflation, but that's about it. Wall Street loves to sell these bonds because it's their business, but there's not much benefit for the average investor. Stocks are a much better option in the long run. According to Jeremy Siegel, if you invested $1 200 years ago in stocks, it would be worth $7,555,000 today. But if you invested in bonds, it would only be worth $1,000. Sure, bonds have done well over the last 40 years because interest rates went down, but when interest rates are flat or going up, bonds don't give you real returns. So what's the solution? You can either accept the volatility of stocks and get better returns in the long run, or you can go for short-term bonds. But keep in mind that even Warren Buffett only keeps his bonds for an average of four months. The risk with bonds is that when interest rates go up, the value of longer term bonds goes down. My opinion, don't own long term bonds unless interest rates are really high and it looks like inflation will be low. But since we have no idea what will happen with inflation and interest rates, bonds are still too risky for my taste. Let's talk about hedges. The thing about hedges is that with all the recent market volatility, most of them have gotten pretty expensive. For example, if you wanted to protect yourself with a put option on the S&P 500, it would cost you 7.8% per year, which used to be only 4%. So hedges are not cheap. But with stocks being down, the best hedge might just be buying great businesses at fair prices, even if it means accepting some volatility. If you can't handle that, then investing in short-term bonds for the money you need for a specific period of time might be a better option for you. So don't invest in hedges if you can't afford it in the shorter term. All right, the last asset class is land. Do you want to invest in land? Sure, it provides protection against inflation, but the issue is that you're just buying a piece of land, and if it's not producing much, it's just not really doing anything for you. Unless, of course, you actively manage it and rent it out. That's where you make money, but it requires effort. I compared the cost of buying land 20 years ago to now, and the difference is insane. You can buy an apartment now for the same price as you could buy a piece of land 20 years ago. 
grow. The problem is that for two decades, there was no yield. But if you had invested in a rental property and reap the benefits, now you'd have two apartments instead of just one piece of land. Of course, land prices fluctuate, so you have to see if it fits your investment strategy and if the yield is worth it. Personally, right now, I'd view this as a general don't. In my opinion, it's better to focus on cash flow as an investor. You still get inflation protection, but with the added benefit of steady income. That's the long-term solution if you're not into rezoning or other active forms of investment. And that's a wrap on part two of our investing do's and don'ts in 2023. Remember, the stock market may be unpredictable, but your investment strategy doesn't have to be. Just stick to the do's, avoid the don'ts, and watch your portfolio soar to new heights. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.